All righty, and then we can go ahead and, and get rolling here. And I'll just again say welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining in today's session on the national traffic system and the, the radiogram uh, that we use to move the traffic or, um, in this case, messages uh, across the country. Um, my fancy title is section traffic manager, which is just a, a nice way of saying uh, that I kind of oversee uh, traffic handling here in the North Texas section. And... Um, look for opportunities to, to help um, you know you folks learn more about traffic handling skills and and keep an eye on the system to see if there's any any improvements or changes or anything like that that we could do um, so again thank you so much for joining in and um, I guess uh, kind of a fun uh, way to start things is talk about how I got started in in traffic handling it was uh, Many years ago, I was in uh, Michigan at the time, and hence the eight in my call sign. And uh, we were uh, preparing with the county um, Aries Races group as a combined uh, group uh, to uh, hold a simulated emergency test. And when they were handing out assignments, they got to me and they said, okay, we need you to uh, go to the hospital and use this radiogram to send in a request to the emergency operations center. And I just kind of said, I don't know what you're talking about. And so that started my journey into, you know, what is the radiogram format and, and, and how does it fit in you know, the, you know, the way that we provide public service and those types of things. And so from there, I've kind of built it up over time and, and, and now I kind of oversee things and, and uh, again, try to pass the knowledge along. So again, thanks much for, for joining in. Um, let's see if this thing's gonna move forward. There we go. Uh, so just to give kind of a quick what we're going to do during this time, uh, just a quick high level overview of the traffic system. I don't want to go into a ton of detail. It's boring, but um, I think if you have a good 30,000 foot view, that'll, that'll help. Uh, kind of the skills that you gain from participating in traffic handling, and then we'll dive into the radiogram and its components, uh, and then we'll have some hands-on practice and kind of talk about how traffic nets work and things if you want to join in on one of those. Again, if you have any questions at all uh, while we're going through things, uh, even if it's a, hey, I remember you talked about that in the, in the radiogram header, but could you explain that one more time? Feel free to throw them in the chat, and we'll kind of take those questions as, as they come in. Um, all righty, so a quick overview of the traffic system. Uh, essentially, uh, we're an organized network of hams uh, that move these messages uh, across country and beyond and started in 1914-1915 uh, uh, as the formal system for relaying traffic across the country. This is the relay in American Radio Relay League. This is why the ARRL Formed was to move these messages across the across the country, and so if you get that random Jeopardy question of well, what is the relay in ARL, well, I guess now you know the answer. Uh, but this is how the league got started, <laughs> and and you know since then we've been continuously moving traffic you know across country and beyond. The types of things that we move, uh, we'll start with the the highest you know level of urgency is uh, emergency traffic, and so these are the the life and death type things. You know I need a generator now or I need diesel for the generator in five hours or the you know the hospital is going to have a big problem and I'm trying to summarize it but yeah you know, those types of things also specific instructions like evacuate the area or you know those types of things thankfully we don't get a lot of emergency traffic on the traffic system so uh, but we can designate items as emergency to make sure they push through the system quickly and effectively then we have priority traffic this is where time is important, uh, but it's not quite the life and death. So maybe notifications on number of injuries or uh, shelter will be established at this address at this time or you know, those types of details. Then we go to welfare traffic and uh, during um, incidents, this is uh, kind of the general use of the traffic system. I wanna let my family know I'm okay or hey, I have family in that area. I wanna know if they're okay. And so we'll move these welfare messages in and out of affected areas. And so um, think Puerto Rico uh, with the earthquake, uh, you can think Houston uh, with hurricanes, and we just wanna let family members know we're okay, that type of thing. We'll move those through the system as, as welfare traffic. And then um, the, the general type of traffic that we have go through the system, uh, 
because thankfully we're not in disasters all the time, is uh, routine traffic. And so these are kind of the, uh, the well wishes, um, you know, sometimes the, you know, the welcome to the hobby or, um, you know, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, uh, those type of, types of messages. And, and those messages help us test the system to make sure that we're ready to go if something happens. Uh, and it helps new operators build their skills and it helps us keep practicing those skills uh, to build that muscle memory so that when we do get into an incident, uh, we're ready to go. We've already been running and we're well established and we've got the rhythm and we can just kick into it and keep rolling in, in things. Uh, NTS is primarily US and Canada and um, we do have the ability to move traffic internationally through the system overall. I know um, Peter, the L4FN, is in Germany and he participates in traffic handling and will send messages across. Uh, we'll get them here in North Texas. I know he sends them to other areas too. Um, third party agreement supply. Uh, so uh, you're not sending traffic to North Korea as far as I know. Um, and uh, you can, um, you can send traffic on behalf of third parties. You don't have to be a ham to, to, to put traffic into the system or receive traffic from the system. Uh, but if you're going international, then the third party rules apply on those. Uh, modes are generally what you would think. Voice, um, CW, so Morse code, uh, and then digital, such as the digital traffic network, which I know with the way the ham bands, the HF bands have been, uh, digital is really nice for punching through the conditions type of thing. Uh, but uh, thankfully here in, in North Texas, we have a lot of, of, of traffic activity. So um, the 72 tra uh, 7290 traffic net, which is a voice net at 7.290, imagine that. Um, a lot of activity even with the way the bands are. Sometimes they'll run into the, we couldn't quite move it and you know you have to kind of get the relay going between stations to make it happen. But um, thankfully the conditions have been fair, I guess. Um, here's how a message would generally move through this system. So uh, the way we stack this is we um, try to start things kind of the same way with when we handle disasters, we start and end at the at the local level. And so let me see if I can get my fancy laser pointer to work. Uh, so we'll start things here at the at the local net level and then uh, we'll work that traffic up to either region or area nets, depends on how far it's gonna travel and have it jump across on those and then come back down and make its way back to a local net uh, in the delivery area so that a ham in that local area can make, make that delivery. And let me see if I can maybe clarify that a little bit better with an example of how something moves. And so let's say I wanna send a message to a family member in Michigan from here in Texas. I go to my local net and I say, I have uh, one piece of traffic that's headed to Michigan and uh, the net control station will work to find another traffic handler that can move it towards Michigan. And I'll talk about how the net control station kind of figures that out um, later. So once that person's identified, that other station will take that traffic from me and then keep it moving towards Michigan. And so in this example, which is a, a real world piece of traffic I sent, that station then relayed it over the digital traffic network to uh, a, a traffic handling node in Indiana that is set up you could kind of think of it like an email server, except there's no internet involved or anything. Uh, you're going over the air for all this. Um, it goes to that node and then that node hangs on to it saying, okay, I have this message stored that's on its way to Michigan. Station in Michigan connects to that node and checks, do I have any traffic that I could take to my area for local delivery? Finds that there, then says, okay, I'll take it. It gets relayed to their station and then in this case, that station happened to be five miles from, from my family member up there uh, in the Thumb region. And so hop on the phone and they make that last mile delivery by phone. The vast majority of these are, are delivered by phone as the, the last mile. Um, can you do email? Yeah, but it, we like to have the, the personal touch. Uh, for these kinds of messages, you know, the happy birthdays or things. Um, also gives a chance to explain, you know, hi, I'm random amateur radio operator and I'm calling you with this message. You know, it, it, it kind of email would kind of get lost with that. And it also better reflects uh, when we're in a disaster and we're, you know, say we're sending that welfare message, hi, I'm okay. 
if you're on the receiving end, how would you prefer to get it? Would you like an email? Or would you like to have someone that calls and make sure that they know and, and say, hey, I got this message from your family member. It says that they're okay, they're at the shelter. You know, you have that personal touch and, 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 and making sure that that message actually reaches the recipient. Because if the phone call, you know, you get a busy signal or something, we try again. Whereas with the email, we just kind of send it and, you know, then we don't know after that unless they're nice enough to reply. Um, so comment in the chat. That's why I got a call from a random ham when I got my license. So um, there are some uh, traffic handlers that monitor uh, the FCC database for uh, new hams. They also will monitor for uh, license that is, licenses that are about to expire. It just kind of depends on, on how they want to approach it. And then they'll send the traffic, whether it's, you know, the welcome to the hobby or um, your license expires on August 10th. Please be sure to renew if you haven't yet or, you know, those types of things. Um, those types of messages are good because it helps introduce new hams to the hobby to here's a whole nother facet of this hobby, right? There's a lot of different things you can do with amateur radio, um, whether it's, you know, doing digital or FT8 or Morse code or traffic handling or, you know, emergency communications, Skywarn, or I just want to talk to France and know that I made it or, you know, there's a lot of different things that, that you can do. And, and plus I feel these messages, uh, you know, help bring the personal touch to the hobby that, you know, we're all kind of in this and, and we're glad that, you know, we're, we're making those connections as, as hams. I know, you know, sometimes might only talk to the other operator for a minute, um, but it's just cool to, to make that connection with other folks. But yeah, that's why you'll sometimes get that, you know, welcome to the hobbies and, you know, enjoy the fun and friendships you will make. You know, I've seen that piece of traffic enough times so I can, you know, write it in my sleep type of thing. Um, if, if other questions or comments, again, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, we'll keep rolling here though. So how does traffic handling help build uh, your skill set as a ham? Um, a lot of it is just how, how you interact on the air, um, whether that you're on a traffic net or a Skywarn net, a social net, you know, a, a information net, those types of things. Um, with traffic handling, uh, well, we'll start at the top here. Slow is fast, right? We're trying to, to, to relay this message across. And, you know, if we're in a real disaster scenario, um, and I could think like the also mudslide up in Seattle, where a giant wall of mud comes sliding down the hillside and takes out square miles of land. And now you have big mud pile with houses and trees and cell antenna towers and you know, all that in it. And you're out there throwing a, a wire in a tree, hopefully, if you've got one nearby and you're doing things, you're probably doing it by pen and paper. And so if you speak too fast, right? Now imagine you're trying to write it down on the other end. We need six cases of water and 12 cots and five, you know, the other person is just gonna, okay, I give up. Slow is fast. I only have to say it once. If I go too fast, then you're gonna, oh, I need you to say that again, or could you say this again, or that, and, and we're gonna burn more time. And in the meantime, you have all this other traffic that could be waiting to move, but it's having to sit there and wait because you're having to repeat the message a few times in order to get it across. So uh, whatever you think slow is, go slower than that. Um, also helps if you um, enunciate certain words, um, just part of that speaking clearly, we wanna try and get it across the first time if we can. And then I like to, to view this lens uh, under the lens of you're not reading it, you're sending it. And I think that just puts a whole different context on what we're trying to achieve with, with traffic handling. We want the, the radiogram as you know, whether it's sloppily as I've written it on here, we want it to arrive like almost a Xerox copy, like 99% of what's filled out on this is what should appear at the other end when it gets there. Uh, we want it there word for word and letter for letter. So again, when I think of it, I'm not reading it to the other station, I'm sending it, I'm relaying it across to the other station. It also helps you build um, familiarity with participating in nets. 
Um, I know one of the fun parts on some traffic nets is uh, the net control station will say, uh, please check in with your call sign phonetically only. And then you get, well, this is Kilo 8 Alpha Michael Tell, and my name's Aaron, and I'm in North Dallas, and I have no traffic. You know, we just want you to check in with your call sign phonetically only. So, so participating in these nets, you, you start to tune in on what exactly are the instructions from the net control station. I mean, that applies with Skywarn nets. I don't know how many folks have, have jumped in on Skywarn nets, and you always get that one that, you know, minimum reporting criteria. I only want to know about half inch hail or cloud rotation. And then you get the, the sirens are going off. No one cares, so to speak. If, you know, if they're going off, we already know there's a tornado warning there. You know, thanks for telling us the sirens went off, but we want to know about hail and we want to know about you know cloud rotation, right? And so, um, you know, you get that you get that feel from the net control station by listening. And Brennan's got a great comment. Listen, listen, listen. I would even say that for any net before you jump in and participate. Listen to it for a bit, get a feel for how it operates uh, before you jump in. Uh, it just helps you get into the groove of it a lot faster if you get the feel for how that net runs. And we'll go over that a little bit more in the in the in how the traffic nets run. ITU phonetics, they're the gold standard. So Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foster. Um, if you're on a local net that's that's focused on, on, on training as well as moving traffic, uh, like we have here in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, we have a two meter traffic net happens twice a day. Uh, if you come in with a dog or a cat, we, you know, we'll, we won't hate it, uh, but we will in time want you to build those ITU phonetics. And if you're jumping in on a, a traffic net that's like regional area, you're on HF and you're moving traffic, very much the gold standard. We're very much looking for ITU phonetics. So this is a good way to practice those ITU phonetics. Pro words, um, say again your traffic uh, or correction or um, I Roger, you know, it, these types of pro words um, not only apply to traffic handling, but they're they're used generally in, in on-air communications. So whether that's uh, public safety dispatchers, if you've ever worked um, uh, with uh, you know police or fire or that type of thing, it's the same things. Uh, can you repeat your traffic, please, or you know that type of thing? Uh, air traffic control. It, it's um, it's a good way to build your skills um, on phonetics before you get into the disaster. Uh, and we'll go over some of those pro words in a, in a bit. Oh, another alternate phonetics are frustrating. <laughs> Always fun when you're working with the PD and it's Adam Boy King. And if you say, you know, Alpha Bravo Kilo, they, they, they kind of look at you and they're like, sorry, I just used what everybody else uses. But yeah, <laughs> Alpha Bravo. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, just, just, yeah, it's just fun. Uh, all right, let's keep going before I rat hole in that any further. Uh, brevity. So when we look at the blank um, uh, radiograms, uh, there are 25 spaces. And um, we want you to be quick and to the point. It's the same thing when you're, again, public safety, or if you're on a Skywarn net and you've got cloud rotation, you know, it's not time for a start. Well, I'm outside and it's windy, so I looked up and I saw the cloud spin funny and I watched it. You know, get to the point. What what is it? I'm at X Y Z intersection and the uh, cloud rotation has started and there may be lowering. Yeah, you know, that's the crux of the message. And so, same thing with radiograms. You know, if you can say it in five words rather than ten, well, then say it in five words. You know, and that type of thing. Uh, Okay, don't know how many folks have dived into the incident command system, maybe as part of um, ARIES, you know, Amateur Radio Emergency Service. Uh, um, fun fact, that's actually um, sister programs. So National Traffic System and ARIES are, are sister programs and ARLs, um, uh, public safety programs type of thing. Um, if you're moving 213s over the air, uh, the way I like to think of it is if I'm walking into the disaster and I got to have someone sit down at the radio and handle moving those uh, 213s and I've got two options. I've got someone that's never moved anything ever or I've got someone that's moved a bunch of radiograms to the traffic system. You know, who am I going to pick? I'm going to pick the person that's got the experience. And why is that? I love this quote at the top. When the disaster begins, the time to prepare ends. And it's really been interesting watching, you know, like with the, the COVID-19 pandemic and folks, you know, what am I going to do to this? Like, 
well, we're in it now. So you're not, you're not preparing anymore. You are reacting, right? And so for folks that, you know, I know I get the tinfoil hat sometimes of why well, I have, you know, water and some, you know, awful tasting food that if I had to eat it, I would, but, um, you know, how do you get, you know, how do you prepare beforehand by practicing? Because once we're in the disaster, that's not the time to learn. That's the time to go. And so build those skills up before you get in there, if you can help it. Um, ooh, mistakes. And we'll talk about that here. Um, any, um, any questions that you have, again, throw them in the chat. Um, feel free to throw them in there. Um, we'll keep rolling here. I like to say that smart mistakes are okay. Um, when you go to learn, um, that's just part of it. You know, sometimes it's just, oh, I didn't quite understand that right or that type of thing. So if you're on a traffic net and you make an error and you know it, then just correct it. You know, oh, correction, and that's a pro word, correction, and we'll go over that. Um, or if someone gives you some feedback over the air, you know, well, first, hopefully they're, they're kind about it. Um, but, um, you know, we're giving that feedback to, to help you tune your skills uh, so that, that you can jump in and, and, and have those, those skills built before we get into the disaster. And especially when I, I know there are new, new traffic handlers joining in on the traffic nets. And, you know, sometimes look at the, Aaron is just being cranky because he, you know, I want to get those habits built early. Because if you start to learn it wrong, and then we come back and try and, as, well, this is actually how it should go, it's a lot harder to unravel all of that muscle memory you've built versus if we catch it in the beginning. So when you, if you get started on a traffic net and it's like, well, here's some feedback, that type of thing, we want to help you build that skill set right from the beginning rather than having to come in later and go, well, now you need to, you know, change it. And then you're going to be the, you know, I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting. So we want to get that built right in the beginning as you get rolling. If there's one thing that I can have you walk away with from this talk, uh, without going too deep into the psychology world, um, you know, the, the biggest question I, I get um, is I'm going to get on the air and I'm going to get on the traffic net and I'm going to make a mistake, mistake and I'm going to sound stupid. We've all been there. Uh, I have been traffic handling for a bit and I still make mistakes. And I like to joke that, well, I'm putting the amateur in amateur radio today. I made a mistake, right? And we just keep rolling with it. I acknowledge a mistake and, and we keep rolling. And it's, a, it's the same thing if, if someone else jumps in and there's, if there's a mistake. It is not the end of the world. It's, this is how we learn and grow. We embrace something that's new. Hopefully we try and build our base knowledge before we jump in um, rather than jumping in blind. Uh, but you know, when mistakes happen, that's when learning occurs, and that's how we build those skills. So, um, you know, if you have folks that, you know, how do I overcome that fear? Jump in. You know, that's the best advice I can give you is just, is just roll with it. Okay, that's kind of the 30,000 foot view of the traffic system and kind of the skills you can get. Um, this is a really good kind of the meat part of it, but I'll check with folks. Any questions on, on that? kind of 30,000 foot view. Again, I could go into the different, you know, what are different traffic nets and regions and the, that type of thing. But, you know, I, um, that could go for quite a bit. <laughs> and it's, you know, can be kind of boring as you're starting out. So uh, here, I'll, I'll take an opportunity to fuel for a bit. Um, and then if no questions, we'll jump into the radiogram. <laughs> mistakes are always <laughs> all right so the comment in the chat so for the recording that you know folks know our local ads also training that mistakes are always welcome yeah we try to help folks learn and grow and that type of thing and even um you know maybe it's a, let's just talk offline by email real fast and let me help clarify type of thing yeah it's always um, our goals with the training nets is to help folks build their skills all right we'll move into the radiograms and again any questions just throw them in there so why radiograms? It's still the same thing. Why ICS-213 is a general message form. It's a standardized message format that we're all using. So whether the radiograms here in the U.S. or it's up to Canada or it's across to Germany or, or whatnot, 
um, it's the same form. And it allows us to effectively uh, move the traffic across the board uh, in a way that's traceable. And this is the one thing I really like about uh, the radiograms versus the 213s. Um, you know, we have some things in the header and, and things to help track it and help to try and make sure words aren't lost as it moves in transit or things like that. Uh, but if we do have a radiogram that, that disappears into the ether, and it does happen, um, we can start to follow that message across. All right, who did you relay it to? And okay, you got it, and who did you send it to? And sometimes we'll send that follow-up and then suddenly the message appears at its destination. And it's like, well, it got hung up somewhere and you know, that type of thing. But um, we can follow them through if, if we need to. So this is the form. Uh, if you've printed it out, awesome. We'll have you uh, try and fill one out in a bit, but we'll walk through how this works first. A um, little bit of animations in here and, and it's sort of smooth when it goes over online. So uh, hopefully it's not jumping too bad, but um, um, you know, for, for the conversation, it won't affect things. But you know, okay. Um, so we'll break the radiogram into these blocks, and the first one's the most is 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 the roughest one. Uh, so we'll spend a little extra time in it, um, and then the rest of them will be easier. Uh, so the header overall just is what helps us. Um, track that message. You can think of it like the email header, like who's it from, who's it to, so to speak. Um, but um, two gets its own spot on a radiogram. But this is what helps us to, to track these things. It starts with the number. And this number is assigned by whoever first fills out uh, the blank radiogram. So if I have one of these and I start filling it out, um, I would give it a unique number so that I can track it. Uh, in my records. There's no standardized way of doing this. Um, I started with one, and then my second one was two, and my third one is three. Uh, some folks will go by the month, so if it's March and it's their first one, they'll go 301, and the next one be 302, and then when, you know, it's um, July, so 701, 702. It's kind of however you want to do it. Um, and then you can reset them you know, periodically if you want. So maybe the first of the year, you go back to one. Some stations do it by month. Again, it's just kind of however you want to do it. I've been rolling with the same numbers for a few years. I'm at 390 something, and I, I might go back to one when I hit 500 or something like that. But again, this is just for your own records. Um, this and everything else that we're going to talk about, aside from the little tracking items at the end, uh, will all stay exactly the same as this moves through the system. So your number will stay attached to this all the way through. And then if we have to come back and ask you a question, you know, we have a question about your number one, then you know how to go back in your records and do that. Precedence is... Oh, here's a good question in the chat before I jump into precedence. Are we required to archive our messages? Um, it is a good practice to hang on to them. Um, and I would hang on to them for maybe uh, one or two months. Now, this is for routine traffic. I would hang on to them for a month or two, uh, just in case there's that odd question. You know, One month is good. I think two is some extra insurance. Um, and then you, you can um, discard them however you want to do that. I keep mine electronically now. I started with paper, and I think that's a really great way to begin. I find that by actually having the physical page and filling it out by hand and things. I learn it better that way for me. And so uh, same thing with net controlling. When you know I started, it was written down. And I get the feel for it. Uh, if you start with software and then uh, you wind up in the field and there are no computers and you're having to do it by paper and you've never done it by, by hand before, you're going to have a big learning curve versus if you build the skill with paper first and then transfer it. So I would start with written, um, written documents and then hang on to them for about a month, uh, maybe two, and then you can go ahead and, and um, you know, recycle them, right? That's what you're supposed to do or you know, that type of thing. That's a good question. Again, any others, throw them in there. Uh, we'll continue precedence. This is uh, back to that, you know, what's the urgency of this thing? Emergency priority, welfare, routine. Uh, when we fill out the radiogram, um, typically I'll just write R for routine. When I say it on the air, I say routine, uh, but I'll write R. Um, the only word that always gets spelled out is emergency. We want to call out the high level of importance of emergency traffic. So the word emergency is 
always written out. Um, but the others like priority welfare routine, you know, we just write their initial and, and we call it a day. Handling instruction. Uh, this provides some guidance on how the message should ha be handled as it moves uh, through the system and also about delivery. Um, I'm going to put them on screen. Uh, these are also in the handout if you happen to, to print it out. Um, the most common one that you're going to see is Hotel X-Ray Golf, the last one, which basically says, uh, please don't spend any money trying to deliver this. Uh, if you are going to have to spend money to deliver it, well, then just cancel the delivery, but let me know. And that's what we mean by service originating station is you send something back to who, whoever, you know, put that in the system to say, you know, you know, unable to deliver or whatever that reason is type of thing. We'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, the one that is kind of despised in this list is Hotel X-Ray Delta, uh, which is essentially real-time tracing. So if I introduce something with a hotel x-ray delta instruction, what will happen is every time that message moves, there'll have to, those stations will need to send me a report on that movement. So I send it to someone else. They then relay it to the next station. At that point, that first station is supposed to say in a message back, okay, I relayed it to XYZ station at this date and time. And that station is supposed to send me something that says, okay, I got it from that first station at this date at time. And then when they move it on to the next station, the same thing happens again. Okay, at this date at time, I sent it off to that station. And then that station, same thing. At this date at time, I got it. And so every time it hops, it generates two messages back to whoever introduced it. It's great for tracking emergency things where you gotta know that it's making progress. Um, if it's a, a happy birthday, um, you know, type of thing, do we need that level of tracking on it? It generates a lot of traffic. If everything was sent with Hotel X-Ray Delta, there would be nothing but acknowledgements moving through the system. And so we reserve Hotel X-Ray Delta for those really urgent things. Or I've tried sending messages through and they're just not making it. I want to understand where the clog is. So let me trace this one and see what's going on. So I would only use Delta in extreme circumstances. Um, so uh, did I beat that horse good? Please don't use that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it was really fun when it was used during field day one year. Uh, there was a lot of feedback on that that uh, that group <laughs> when they set all their field day traffic with with the tracer instruction on it. Um, does the uh, reply go back down the chain or acknowledge to the originator only? So um, whether it's a Hotel X-Ray Delta or let's say it's Hotel X-Ray Charlie, and you can use more than one of these. It's not like you have to pick one. You could do a bunch of them. Um, Hotel X-Ray Charlie, report and date and time of delivery back to the originating station. Um, you would write a radiogram back to whoever uh, that, that radiogram was from with that information. And whether it goes back the same exact way that it came to you or it goes through a completely different part of the system, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just starts making its way back to whoever introduced that piece of traffic. So um, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to flow exactly back the way it came. It can work through the system through another channel. Okay, uh, other questions, throw them in the chat, please. Um, station of origin. Um, this is effectively who's filling out the radiogram for the first time. So if you are filling out a radiogram to a family member, uh, you are the station of origin. If um, you are filling out the radiogram on behalf of someone else that wants to put a message into the system, you are the station of origin. You are the first ham that is filling this in. So your call sign goes, in the station of origin. And then back to that, you know, was it delivered or did I have a question? I know to come back to you because you're the station of origin that brought this thing for the first time. And this station of origin will stay there through the whole journey. It, it does not change, none of this, none of this changes. Um, place of origin can be a little trickier. So we'll get to that in a sec, but station of origin is whoever is filling out the very first radiogram for that for the first time. 
the check is basically a way for us to see if any words disappeared or got added uh, to the message. So it's a count of how many words are in the text. Uh, there are some shorthands we can use, and I'll go into those in a bit. Uh, if you use one or more shorthands, then we put ARL before the, the number to signify we're using shorthands in the message. Uh, but if you don't have any shorthands, then it's just, you know, count. Um, you know, there are nine words in here, so the check is nine. And I'll, I'll show the example of that when I get some like, real traffic up on the screen. Place of origin. Okay, here's the curveball. This is the location of the person who authored the message. So if this is you writing a message to a family member, then it is where you are, city and state. If it's for, you're on the phone with somebody, like I'm here in Dallas, and let's say I'm on the phone with someone in Fort Worth that wants to send a message, and I fill in the radiogram, the station of origin is who? It's me. I'm the one that's filling in the, the radiogram for the first time. The place of origin is where? Fort Worth. It's the location of the person who's authoring the text. So that's the fun curveball. Now, if you put, if you were, like if I were to put Dallas instead of Fort Worth, like the system will not implode. Uh, but um, the place of origin is whoever is, is authoring the text. The station of origin is the first ham that's, that's filling out the radiogram. Time filed is uh, optional, just like the handling instruction is optional. Uh, but you should, you, you should put the time filed uh, if it's emergency or priority or welfare traffic. We want to know the age of that in minutes. Um, and also with the Hotel X-Ray Bravo instruction, which says uh, just cancel this if it's not delivered within so many hours. Well, I got to know how many hours went by. So definitely fill out the time filed for, for those types of things. The traffic system uses uh, universal, you know, coordinated universal time, so UTC or, or Zulu. Uh, if you don't indicate a time zone, then that's what's assumed. Uh, universal uh, time is what's assumed. Uh, if you are going to use the time zone, then make sure you put it in there. So whether that's you know, Central Daylight Time or Eastern Daylight Time or, or that type of thing, then you'd put the time, the time zone in there along with the time. Very rarely, though, is the time filled in. Uh, the date, uh, this is really easy, uh, first three letters of the month, and then um, and then the date. So, you know, January, I still say the whole word on the air, January 1-5, March 3, July 2-2, two, two, and uh, notice how I give each number individually. Uh, the year is never included. If you got a piece of traffic that's a year old, uh, then, you know, probably, you know, time to give up on it. But, um, you know, we don't need the year. You know, th these messages aren't that old. And it just burns time, right? We want to get these moved as uh, efficiently as we can. So the year doesn't add any value, so we don't bother with it. And again, UTC. Uh, and same story. If you were to uh, list a piece of traffic on a local traffic net and, you know, it's, it's 10.30 p.m. here in Dallas. It's technically the next day in UTC, but if I, if I don't put tomorrow on it, the world, again, does not end. But if we want to follow the rhythm of it, we would follow whatever universal time is. Well, I have a comment in there. Thanks for clearing up place origin. Yeah, that's a good time, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> all right, so here's how I would read um, the header on the air. And again, this comes down to some net personalities. In, on the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, two-meter traffic nets, uh, I'm going to read it like how we would do it on there. You might find that your local traffic net is just a little bit different. So again, listen to pick up that that. Um, that net personality is what I like to call that. But I would say this header just like this. Please copy message number 312 routine hotel x-ray golf kilo 8 alpha mike hotel 12 dallas texas 2145 january one five. Now notice I don't have to say, okay, the number is three one two and the precedence is routine and the station of origin is it. We're all using the same template. So we all know the order of, of things. We don't need to say the subject over and over again. Again, we're trying to move these efficiently so we don't need to burn time on that. I did mention that two items are optional, the handling instruction and the time. So how would I read that if I didn't have those? I just skip them. Please copy number three one two routine Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, 1-2, Dallas, Texas, 
January 1-5. Again, the other station will know that you, there is no handling instruction and there is no time filed. It's one of those rhythm of the business type of things. We know that those are optional. And so if you don't mention it, then they're not there. And then we can keep moving with things. And uh, you know, comment that's basically how the header is read here in, in North, uh, Northern Virginia. Yeah, a lot of this is, if you're really bored someday, uh, there is a 400 plus page best practices <laughs> PDF uh, that I, I just hate. <laughs> so, uh, but if you really want to, if you really want to get in there and read it, uh, there's a lot of reading you could do on traffic. And it's all been built just based on things learned over time. It's an excellent resource. Uh, but, um, you know, I, if I were to throw it at you and say, go read this 400 page thing, you're going to get lost. So this, a lot of this is like the 80%, you know, what you're going to see the vast majority of the time, but um, there is a best, a, 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 a be, a best practices guide if you really want to get the, the, the big details on, on, the, on, on good traffic handling. Um, that's the header. So that's the hard part. We're through it. Uh, any questions on the header? I will keep moving into the address part next, but again, any questions, throw them in there. Uh, the address C is the, the destinations. There we go, yeah, methods and practices guide. Yeah, that's, yeah, MPG, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> 400, 400 pages of fun. Uh, this is essentially like sending any letter. First, last name, call sign if they have one. Again, they don't necessarily have to have one. So if you wanna send, you know, uh, happy holidays, or Merry Christmas, happy birthday to a family member that doesn't have a license, please do. Um, but first, last name, call sign if they have one, address, city, state, zip, and, and phone number. Uh, the last mile delivery is very much done by phone. So we ask that you include a phone number. Um, if you include an email that is an option, um, it, it removes that personal touch, but you know, some folks just don't want their phone number out there. We'll still deliver it by email. If you do include it, then you need to write it out. Um, so like for this example, if it was jane.doe at example.com, then it's jane.dotdoe at sign or at at example dot dot com we spell all of those things out we don't put you know a period or anything like for that because again you're relaying it on the air so how do you read how do you how do you say a period you know i mean you, you you would spell it out to indicate there is a dot there so here let's send this one as an example to jane doe uh address and, and phone number and so i would read this uh like this i would say that this is uh to jane i'm gonna go a little faster just for sake of time i would pause to give the other person time to write but so this is going to jane doe i spell delta oscar echo amateur call alfa romeo one tango address figures one two three mixed group eight five tango hotel street direction southeast some town wisconsin zip figures zero zero one two one Phone figures 330-555-4424. Break. Now, break's one of those fun ones. We'll talk about that in a, in a second. Um, this is your introduction to ProWords. And so in the reference guide, uh, there's a whole list of these, but we'll cover some of the, the more common ones here. Um, I spell means you're about to spell something. Good practice to do that with last names because they can be fun. Also can be good to do that with first names. Because if it's John, is it J-O-N, is it J-O-H-N? You know, that type of thing. So if it makes sense to spell it, go for it. Um, but if you're gonna spell it, make sure you kind of do that without pausing. So instead of uh, Doe, I spell dot. The other person's probably already tried to write it down at that point. So if you're gonna spell it, then just go right into spelling it. So uh, going to Jane, Doe, I spell Delta Oscar Echo, you know, and then keep going with it. Amateur call means you're about to give a call sign. Figures, whether address figures or zip figures or phone figures, you're about to give some, some numbers. Mixed group uh, means you're about to give a mixture of letters and numbers. Uh, directions, really only used in the, the address. Um, so it's just there to, you know, uh, Northeast 8th Street or Southwest this or that type of thing. And then break. Um, this usually throws a curveball because I know a lot of nets here in the Metroplex um, will have in the preamble, 
if you have emergency or a priority traffic uh, at any time, uh, say break, break, followed by your call sign. So sometimes it creates this, well, break must mean emergency. Well, in this case, break indicates uh, you're pausing. And so you would you know, read the, you know, you'd relay the address and phone number and then break, and then you'd let up on push to talk. And you wait for that other station to come back to you with whether they need any fills. You know, I need you to repeat this or that type of thing. Uh, or they will say go or go ahead, go text. That means you can continue with the radiogram. They have, they have everything. And in the comment, we say break for text for clarity. And we'll have some folks do that here in the Metroplex too. They'll say break for text um, to let you know that, that they're pausing before they jump into the text section. Um, Op notes, and so uh, this is not something that's commonly seen, but but it, it can be. So I'll just mention it. Uh, two places for op notes to, that they can appear in these. This is the first one. This one relates to handling or delivery. So in this example, I've put uh, work day only, and so maybe the phone number I've given is a work phone number, and so why bother calling on the weekend? This helps that station that's about to do the delivery in this example to have an idea of when to try making the phone call so they're not burning time on you know a weekend attempt that's just you know going to lead to voicemail or something like that again operational notes or op notes are optional but uh for this first one it gives you know some some help to that delivering station or to those handling it if there's any extra information that that might help them uh, when relaying this along that's the addressy part um, if you have questions on that, throw them in the chat. We'll go into this receiving station info part. This is really easy. Um, the only time I ever fill this out is if I'm dropping the radiogram in the mail. This is uh, your station information. Um, and this can be helpful if you're putting it in the mail and you want the, that person to know how to get a hold of you if they have any questions or anything like that. Or if you're in an emergency or something like that, uh, who filled in this radiogram, then you put your information there and then that way if there are any follow-up questions, they know how to get a hold of you. <clears throat> Maybe it's a, we can't read this one word, can you read it for us or you know that type of thing. Um, otherwise, I know my name and my phone number and stuff. I don't need to fill it in. It's only helpful if I'm going to put it in the mail or something like that. And, you know, someone else is going to be looking at it. And if they have questions, they know how to get hold of me. So that is virtually always blank for me. The text is the heart of the message. There are 25 spaces or 25 groups. I like to think of it as $5 a word. Uh, going back to that brevity and be concise and to the point, um, we want to very effectively relay these through the system. And so the longer they are, the more time they take. If it's worth the extra 5 or $10, then it's, it's, it's worth it. But if there's a way to be more concise and still get the message across clearly and effectively, then, then go for it. So let's say I wanted to send this. Great seeing you yesterday. Hope to get together again soon, 73. So in um, radiograms, punctuation, just like in the email, is spelled out. So periods are written as either the letter X, which we say is initial X-ray, or the whole word X-ray, both the both work. Uh, others that you might see that aren't too common, but they are, are used on occasion, is if you have a question, the question mark is written as the word query. Uh, exclamation points are written as exclamation. Uh, not too often, but you're going to see a lot of x-rays in things. That's, that's the most common one. And so here's how this would uh, translate. Uh, great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figures 7-3. Now, I didn't need to put an x-ray between soon and 73. You can kind of gather that that was the end of the sentence. And so why spend the five bucks to put a period there when I don't need it, right? So, um, you know, and sometimes I'll still do it and I'm reading it on the traffic net and then I say x-ray figures that I laugh at myself and I'm like, well, that's how I read it, so go for it. But, you know, it's like, I guess I had an extra $5 in my pocket and let's go for it. But, uh, you know, if you don't need that x-ray there, then, you know, no need to spend the five bucks type of thing. If it helps clarify things, I would include it. So if it was like a date, right? If it was on August 10, uh, 73, then I would um, 
put an x-ray there, I'd spend the five bucks to, to make sure there's some, some clarity. Uh, on August figures one zero, initial x-ray figures seven three. Just gives that extra clarity that the 73 is not part of the year or the, you know, whatever might be next to it type of thing. Question in the chat, your responsibility to help format the message. So um, if, uh, whether I'm filling it out for myself or on behalf of someone else, um, I own filling in the radiogram. I'm the one that's introducing it and making it for the first time. So I own whatever words get in there. Because as soon as I relay it on the air, ideally that's exactly how it's gonna arrive on the other end. So when you're putting the message together, um, you know, go for brevity and things um, to, um, you know, to make sure the message moves effectively through the system. And, you know, if you have a word, uh, if, you, if you were to send supercalifragilisticexpialidocious on a, on a radiogram, I would really look at you like, why, why, you know? <laughs> but uh, in other words, you know, go for simplicity, but still get the point across. Uh, if you're moving a radiogram that says we need methotrexate, like a medication, well then you, that's worth it to say methotrexate. You're not gonna simplify it any further than that as a medication, right? But, you know, again, try and be, you know, concise and, and efficient with your, with your traffic when you go to author it before you bring it to the system. Uh, questions on 73. Uh, is it figure 73 or 73? Um, when we have numbers in the text like this, uh, we use the pro word figures to indicate that it's a number. And then we say each digit individually. So it's figures seven, three. We give each number individually. I mean, otherwise you could, you could get the, um, you know, the good time of, you know, if you say, you know, 146 or, you know, uh, one, four, six, or one. We want to standardize how we do that. And we want to do it in a way where we're going to make sure each number gets there clearly. So we give them one at a time, each digit individually. Do you have to get the sender's approval of the message? Um, if it was an ICS-213 and you're working in an emergency operations center or something, then yeah, there's going to be someone that signs off on it. If you are authoring your own message, then you approve your own message type of thing. If you're on the phone with somebody and they want to send, you know, happy birthday, you know, type of thing, and you decide that you could say that in the shorthand or, you know, that type of thing, you don't necessarily need to get their okay to say, well, I'm going to take that period out because we don't need it or, you know, that type of thing. Um, you know, a lot of this is just, uh, you know, good judgment on, you know, if, if someone's telling you, you know, tell them, you know, glad, I, I, tell them I'm glad to hear from them and that I hope they're doing well. Well, you know, you can, um, you know, put that in the message right along those lines. You know, I am glad to hear from you. I am doing well. You know, I wouldn't cut it in half or anything like that. You know, try and follow what they're giving you. But the way I would do it on the phone is they, um, they'll tell me kind of what it is they want to say, and sometimes they're making it up as they say it, so it's not, you know, exactly ready, but I will um, type it out, and then when they're done, I'll say, okay, here's what I'm going to send, blah, 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 do, 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 and then they'll go, okay, great, or, well, can you add, or, you know, that's kind of their sign-off type of thing, just to, to verify that I've got everything that they wanted to say in that, so hopefully that, that gives you a good answer there. Uh, we'll keep moving. Um, when you're putting the check together, things like x-ray and query count as a word when you're filling in the check. So if you look at what we've got um, on, the, on the text here, it's uh, 12. Uh, great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray are the first five. Hope to get together again or the next five soon, figures seven, three are the last two. So the check here is 12. And when I read that as part of the header, I would say one, two. And we'll put this all in the, of the radiogram so you can see it all as a big picture. Uh, again, I would pause between words, but um, you know, for sake of time, great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figures seven, three, break. So some more pro words that we can have here. Um, initials, or some say letter group, uh, means you're about to give initials. Uh, break, uh, break for signature, because right, the signature is next. Um, again, we're giving that pause to see if that other station needs uh, any fills. Like, I need you to say again, word after hope, or uh, please spell yesterday, or you know, th you know things like that. Uh, if you get the please say all again after yesterday, that 
that's a good sign you might have went a little too fast uh, and they just gave up so slow down the next time uh, affirmative or negative is much better than yes or no because it's longer so we have less chance of misinterpreting it type of thing so affirmative or negative and then correction if you did make a mistake um, then you can just say correction and then whatever the correction is uh, you know, so great seeing you, uh, initial uh, correction, yesterday. I say again, great seeing you yesterday, initial It gets you into that rhythm of, of putting that correction in and keeping things falling. Uh, so the last part now, what if I'm a bad speller? Well, um, when you read it over the air, we won't know how you spelled it. We'll just know how you said it. Um, but if someone asks you to spell something like well, methotrexate, right? Um, try and get it right. But if, um, if something is introduced with a misspelling and that's how it's handed to you as it's in transit, uh, then relay it exactly as you got it. We're not in the middle of this to change the message while it's in transit, right? This is not the time for the telephone game where I start with, you know, I need, uh, two cases of bottled water and it ends with, I need five one gallon jugs of iced tea or, you know, something right. So if it has a mistake in it or things, move it along just as, as you got it. Um, I wouldn't change anything like that. So if, if, if something comes in with a spelling mistake, it'll move through the system like that. As long as we know what it's saying, then, then we're okay. Um, the signature, so this is, um, the last part that would generally be filled out, it's below the text and above the sent and received info with no label. Um, so it's just kind of one of those, we know it goes there types of things. Generally it's your name and your call sign if you have one. So in my case, it's Aaron K8AMH. This is uh, uh, how I would finish this message on the air. I would say uh, signed. Uh, so the other, so I've read the text, I break, the other station says, go ahead. I would say, signed, Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel, end, number 312, no more, how copy. So end means that's the end of the, of the radiogram. Uh, book traffic we'll talk about in a second. No more is just how many you have left to relay to that station. So if you're like, I have three that are going to Michigan, then I would read the first one. I would say end number, whatever that was, uh, two more, how copy this one. And then the other station knows we still have some more to go. Uh, how copy, so did you copy it successfully? And then, you know, Roger, I Roger your number 312, uh, good copy on 312, something like that is how you'd know the other station uh, has everything successfully. Now this is the second place where op notes can appear. Uh, this is more commonly used. This is related to uh, replies or servicing. And so for example, we could have um, Aaron uh, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel op note reply or service to KE5YTA. Effectively what this is saying is if you have a reply that you need to send uh, to me, send it to me via KE5YTA um, and his name's Roger. So the message would go to Roger and I'll, and I'll, um, I'll show this in a real radiogram of how this, how this works. This is good for um, like for Peter in Germany, how we get the messages back to him. So uh, the last part of this is uh, your tracking. So everything we've talked about so far, aside from the receiving station info will not change in the radiogram ever. This will stay the same as it moves through the system. Um, the received and sent info, this is for your tracking. Uh, who did you get it from and who did you send it to? And so let's say I sent this to Roger. I would put KE5YTA. I like to track what net I was on when I, when I did that. That's optional, but that's just a little piece of extra info for me. And again, I use UTC here, um, you know, with the date and the time that I, I relayed it. And that way, if I need to go back and, and try and follow its journey, I have my records. Roger will have his records and we can start tracing it uh, through the system. So this is how this radiogram uh, looks from everything that we've built up. So let me zoom in on it so we have a little bit better view. Uh, so the number precedence, we had no handling instructions, so that's blank. The origin is me, uh, check of one, two, Dallas, um, where it's headed, the message, 
uh, signature and then um, who I relayed it to after you know I moved it on the traffic net. Are there any questions on on this example? And I'll buy you some time. I did not receive an email with the radiogram download or print. Okay, so if you go to k8amh.com forward slash handout. Oh, is that plural? Let me go find out because I don't remember. Um, if the browser will open. I think it's plural. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and let this open slowly for some reason. Um, Come on, Internet. So there we go. Uh, you'll find the reference guide here on the left. And then I've got two copies of the radiogram forms, uh, one that um, is uh, not filled or the other one that is. So if you prefer to fill it out on screen, then, then you've got it. Um, great. Any other questions or anything, feel free to, to throw them in there. Um, what if we have the same message going to more than one person? So let's say it's, you know, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, and I'm sending it to three different people. We call that book traffic. Uh, it's just a nice way of saying that, well, the message itself is the same. I just have it going to different people. And then when I go to relay it on the air, I only need to read the text once. And then I just give the, the, uh, the destination separately. Uh, each radiogram still has its own number. So if I had, you know, three going to family members in Michigan, then, you know, if it was 312 is the first one, then the second one's 313 and the next one's 314. Um, and then the address information would change, right? Different destination, but the rest of it's the same. So I would relay this. Um, there's two ways you could do it. One is where you just give the common parts, the parts that appear the same in all of them. Um, uh, in, in Dallas, we read the first radiogram all the way through the first time. So I, we start with number 312, routine, kilo weight, alpha, two, Jane Doe, Grace seeing you, sign. And then the next one, we would say, okay, the next one in the book is number 313, and it's going to uh, John Smith, 123 Fake Street, and number 313, one more in the book, how a copy. And then the next one would be 314 going to um, you know, Jane Smith, you know, type of thing. Um, so again, listen to that net personality, but we don't need to read the whole header. We don't need to read the text over again or things in the comment. Great for your field day traffic book of 10. Yeah, it's just more, you know, speedy type of thing. It helps speed up um, moving things. And you think about the, um, you know, ARL 56 new amateur radio license. Welcome to the hobby. Enjoy the fun and friendships you will make, right? If um, you know, someone like Loren, uh, November 1 India, Quebec, India, or Chris, November X-ray 9 Kilo, uh, and Jim, uh, you know, are, are sending the same greetings that we just put that through as book traffic, only have to read the message once, and then we can go through all the destinations type of thing. Okay, I talked about shorthands, uh, so we'll dive into these in, in a bit. Here's an example of where a shorthand is used. Um, and so uh, this is uh, real, I just, I took out the name. Um, ARL 56, new amateur radio license. Welcome to the hobby. Enjoy the fun adventures you will make 73. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, fun how you just memorize those over time. Um, we're using a shorthand here uh, because this does mean something and it's uh, in your handout, um, uh, the uh, ARL numbered radiograms. Um, they provide a way for us to send common phrases very quickly. Um, when you deliver it to the, to the other end, of course, you're going to say what it means. Like I wouldn't say, okay, you got a message and this is ARL 50. You know, they're not going to know what that means. So tell them what it means. Uh, and then in the check, we indicate that we have a shorthand in use. And so the check of one, two, you know, the example would become Alpha Romeo Lima one, two. Again, to flag the fact that we've used a shorthand. Here are some common ones. You have the, the full list of them in the handout. Um, ARL 50, greetings by amateur radio, uh, 56, congratulations on your, and then whatever, uh, most worthy and deserved achievement. Um, for servicing, 
if we want to tell a station we delivered their message, then it's ARL 47, and then we give the number and the destination and the date and time of delivery. If we couldn't deliver it, then ARL 67, and then we give the message number and maybe some other details, and then we explain why, you know, phone number, out of service, or no answer, or, you know, that type of thing. So when we look at this example, ARL 56, new amateur radio license becomes congratulations on your, and this is the blank, so what follows this shorthand here, you know, new amateur radio license, initial x-ray, that's what goes in the blank. So congratulations on your new amateur radio license, a most worthy and deserved achievement. Welcome to the hobby. Enjoy the fun and friendships you will make, uh, 73. And that would be how I would deliver it to its uh, destination. Um, we spell out the numbers in these shorthands, and this is to help clarify that this is part of the shorthand. So I would read this as initials, Alpha Romeo Lima, 50, I spell Foxtrot India, Foxtrot Tango Yankee, 6, I spell Sierra India X-Ray. We're spelling them to, to call out the fact that they are spelled out words rather than like figure seven, three, right? We wanna clarify that these are written out words rather than some digits. And so that's why we spell them out like that. Uh, some other quick examples, and then uh, we can do maybe a little bit of hands-on. Um, let me zoom in on this just for fun. Uh, so ARL 50, John, and congrats on new amateur radio license, X-Ray. Enjoy all that the radio community offers, uh, X-Ray best regards. Um, ARL 50, uh, remember what that is? Uh, it's uh, greetings by amateur radio. And so that's how greetings by amateur radio, John, and congrats on it. Here we have um, the op note that, that Peter includes. Um, so he signs it, Peter, DL4FN, op note reply or service message to him by, uh, through Roger in Richardson, Texas. And so what this means, I see someone recognizes Peter's messages in the chat. Um, what this means is that um, to send something back to Peter, so like if that other station wants to say thank you and, and hope to hear you on the air or you know, whatever their, their reply is, or if it's, I couldn't deliver it because the phone number is disconnected, I would send the reply to Peter, DL4FN, care of Roger, KE5YTA in Richardson, Texas. So I won't send it to Germany. I'm gonna route it to Roger here in Dallas because Peter has asked Roger here in Dallas to act as kind of his liaison to get the messages back to him in Germany. So I'm gonna send it back to uh, Roger, and then Roger will will relay it across to to Peter. If that makes sense, how the how this op note works at the at the end. Again, this is relating to you know the replies or service messages. We're going to still send this reply to Peter, but we're going to route it through Roger because that's who Peter's designated here in the U.S. Uh, for receiving you know, for working you know those replies back to him in Germany. Same thing here on the on this one. Peter's got the op note. Uh, you know, hello, Gary, congrats on your new amateur license, um, you know, that type of thing. And again, these are ones I put in the mail because um, I, I choose if I can't get a hold of them on the phone, then I, I mail them. It's a personal choice. And then I fill out these details here in the, you know, the receive box so that if they have any questions, uh, they know how to get a hold of me. And I put a little letter with an explanation to just saying, you know, this is part of traffic handling and here's what the message says and that type of thing. All right. So we'll do a little hands on. Uh, let's say you're going to send something to me. There's my address and phone number, and you're going to send hope to hear you on the band soon and 73. So go ahead and take some time. If you've got your blank radiogram printed out, and if it's, you can make up the number, and it'd be one or 500 or however you want to do that, but I'll give you a couple minutes. And um, in the meantime, if folks have questions, um, feel free to, um, throw them in the chat. Again, more fuel, getting a little cooler, but I'll still work it. <clears throat> Excuse me.
Again, we'll give you another minute here. So, um, again, any questions? Feel free to throw them in the in the chat. Uh, the handling instructions definitions list. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is also in the the handout. So why don't I I open it here, um, and we'll kind of walk through it very very quickly. Um, so at the beginning of this phonetic alphabet is again the gold standard uh, and then the handling instructions and what they all mean um, precedences so again priority welfare emergency uh, and then uh, common pro signs that are used uh, in traffic handling and then that's followed by the uh, the arl uh, shorthands and there are two blocks of these the first group is generally emergency related you know like supplies requests or uh, comments on damage to the area or things group two is more for the routine things uh, you know greetings by amateur radio greetings on your birthday um, you know the holiday greetings and and things like that other questions So from a big picture, how do I initiate a message from a local level and get it to a regional relay? So the way it'll work, uh, we'll go through this in the in the kind of the net discussion, <clears throat> um, is you'll bring it to a local traffic net and then who, someone else that's also checked into that traffic net will be able to act as that bridge to a regional or area net and then they'll take that there and move it there and that's how it'll jump across. I think it'll become a little bit clearer when we get into the pardon me, to get into the um, how the, the traffic nets work uh, here in just a second. Um, but that's kind of a quick answer uh, is when you bring it to the local level, you'll have folks that can take things to the regional or area or things, and that's how it'll keep going. Yeah, there'll be liaisons to other nets. Yeah, we're going to walk through that. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's keep moving. If you don't have it quite filled out, that's okay. Um, this is effectively how it should look. Um, so whatever number you put um, in the routine, um, your call sign, a check of nine or a niner, uh, your city and state, today's date, then my address and phone number, and then one word in each blank, hope to hear you on the band soon, figure seven, three, and then your name and your call sign here in this little tiny spot. Um, anybody have any questions on how um, we filled it out this way, or if you had something a little different or anything that I can I can clarify on this? I'll give you about 30 seconds uh, and then we'll we'll jump in a little bit. We got a little bit more to go. We're not doing horrible on time. We've got maybe another 10, maybe 15 minutes. I added an initial x-ray. Um, so again, um, so that's the comment. I added an initial x-ray in the chat. Um, so if you put an x-ray between two, uh, soon and 73, you can do that. Um, is it... Um, is it necessary? Uh, not necessarily. I know the sentence ended here at soon. If you put it, you can put it. Um, but I like, I personally like to save the five dollars, <laughs> and so I don't put, I don't put an X-ray there for a period. Uh, another question: What's the, what's the rational for place? So place of origin. So, um, again, on this, this is the location of whoever authored this text. Um, the rationale for that, yeah. Um, so this is um, so that we know where the message came from. Um, because again, if, if you are the station of origin, like if I'm filling it out and I'm in Dallas, but the people that it are, um, are authoring that message are in Fort Worth, right? And if I say I need five cots at Mercy Hospital, Mercy Hospital in Fort Worth or Mercy Hospital in Dallas or Mercy Hospital, right? It, it just helps provide some of that clarity first off. And then um, also um, as um, 
Darwin's put in there. I think it's to help replies go back to the proper local net. It does help with, with routing um, because we've got that clue in there of where we can head it back to for its, for its destination. Uh, but when we think about emergency traffic or things, or just, you know, where did this come from? Um, you know, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, that's an 8. So this must have come from Michigan or West Virginia or something, right? No, it's coming from Dallas, Texas. And so, um, you know, if I don't have access to uh, the FCC ULS, the, you know, Universal Licensing System, or things like QRZ to look up addresses, then this is my clue. Place of origin, at least for me, when I send it would be Dallas, Texas, and that's how you'd know how to route it back to me type of thing. Yeah, other questions on this? Um, feel free to throw them in the chat. I'm going to keep rolling just to try and, and keep um, conscious of time here. Uh, so now on traffic nets, um, I won't dive into this too much. It's pretty much like any other net you've hopefully joined where you get the preamble, you know, welcome to the traffic net. My name is, and I'm your net control station, and I will now take check-ins from stations with traffic, which means you're bringing a radiogram that you want to um, introduce into the system or relay through the system. Uh, and then you can take check-ins from stations without traffic, which means I don't have any radiograms to relay, but I'm here if you need help relaying things. And then after that, the relaying begins. Two stations will connect together uh, on the air. And then this is, I'm, I'm doing this as a voice net because that's how at least many folks here at Dallas get started on traffic nets is at the local level. You know, if it's a CW net or things, you know, you follow similar. Um, here's how a net control could log things. For this one, I was the one that was uh, running the net. Um, and so... Um, of course, I track myself as the, as the net control station. Next, we had Calvin check in. He brought a piece of traffic for Bowie, Texas. Then uh, Don, W9BE, checked in. He acted as a liaison for uh, Tex, uh, the Texas traffic net, which um, that, for me, as a net control station, tells me an option on how to route traffic out of Dallas-Fort Worth. I have this option for moving traffic out of the area. Same thing with uh, Roger, KE5YTA. He interfaces with the digital traffic net. And if I have to send something Michigan, Wisconsin, you know, Washington State, something, then I know that Roger is an option to move things out of the area through the digital traffic net. And same with John. Roger, in this case, brought a book of five. So it's the same text and things. Uh, going to five different destinations. Two of those were in Dallas, one in Plano, one in Prosper, one in Melissa. And then John also had his a book of three, separate book, but book of three. And then he had one, an, an, another one that's not part of the book. And then last, Corky checked, uh, checked in uh, with a net report, which is um, how we turn in our statistics. Uh, and they get reported to me, and then I report them to ARR headquarters. But how do we turn in those net reports? Well, through a radiogram. Um, so, okay, let me turn off the pointer and we'll keep moving. Uh, so the way this would work is after figuring out who can route what, uh, the net control station would have, um, those two stations connect, you know, and say, okay, I'm, um, you know, this is K at AMH, I'm ready to copy your, your traffic. And then they would read the header and the address and phone number and then break, and then I would either say, please say again, phone number, or please say again, city, or please spell city. Or When I'm ready to go, I would say go, go text, go ahead. Other station would then um, read the text section one word at a time, and then break. And then I would say, you know, please say again, word after blah, or whatever. go, go ahead, go signature. Then they would read the signature, you know, sign, some da 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 end number, whatever, no more or one more, how copy, uh, I roger your number, whatever, you know, thanks for the traffic, and then K at AMH, and they, you know, thank you for taking that, and ID, and then turn it back to net control. Um, that's how, um, that's how you would flow. I see the questions on how to get involved. I'll jump into that in just a second. So the way I would move this is I would say, uh, please copy my number three, and I'm going to again go fast. Please copy my number 312 routine, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel, 12 Dallas, Texas, January 1-5 uh, to Jane Doe, amateur call Alpha Romeo 1 Tango, address figures 123, mixed group 85 Tango Hotel, street, direction southeast, 
some town Wisconsin, zip figures 00121, phone figures 330-555-4424. Break, and then the other station, go ahead. Great seeing you yesterday, initial x-ray. Hope to get together again soon, figures 73. Break, and the other station would say go. Signed, Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha, Mike Hotel. End, number 312, and no more. How copy? And the other, I copy, uh, Roger, you're 312. Thanks for the traffic. Uh, thanks for taking it. Okay, they made back to net. So that's how we would move that on the air. How do you get involved in the traffic nets? Um, I would recommend finding, if possible, a local traffic net in your area. Um, the uh, ARL uh, main webpage, ARL.org, has a net database that you can search. And let me make a note. I will put that in my follow-up email. Um, how to search local nets. And you can find local nets and regional nets and things. Um, and then get involved that way. Find the net at your local level. Or uh, if not available, find a regional or area net on HF. Uh, again, listen. I recommend you listen in the beginning, get a feel for that net and how it flows, uh, and then you can start jumping in and, and participating. Um, I know, like, for example, here, the 7290 traffic net, the first time you check in and, um, you know, participate in the net, even if you don't move any traffic, um, they send you a radiogram thanking you for finding them and for, and for jumping in on the net. And they're very happy to hear from folks that join in. Um, lots of good nets and lots of um, you know, excitement when folks um, want to jump in type of thing. Okay, great presentation. Uh, we got Aaron and Justin here in Discord to do a demo for us. So I'll uh, let you guys take it from here and we'll do some questions afterwards. Uh, go ahead. All right, Aaron, I guess I'll, I'll take it, I guess. <laughs> Everybody, th thanks, for, thanks for jumping in. We'll do a couple of practice uh, radiograms oh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've printed them out, uh, from the handouts page, uh, and I, I promise I'll go nice and slow. <laughs> and, uh, you could you could give this a spin to see uh, uh, how it, how it flows for you when filling out the radiogram, and then if there's any questions on, uh, well, what happened there, or um, what did that mean, or those types of things. We've got some time here to to take questions, so um, hopefully I've bought enough time for folks to get their blank radiograms handy. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start. Um, Doing this if this if this works or do you want to do questions first? Let me let me double check uh, to make sure I'm good to go with with the relaying. Let's go ahead. All righty, then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and uh, this will be number eight zero nine er routine kilo eight alpha Mike hotel one four Dallas Texas August. Niner, uh, to your station. That's how we would do that on the air when it's going to the recipient is, is the same ham. So going to your station. Break. This is where somebody would say go. So I'll assume I got to go. Thank you for attending today. Hope to get some traffic from you soon. Figures 7-3, break. And again, I, you know, say again or something, but, you know, go, you know, we'll do go signature. That's signed Aaron, amateur call, Kilo 8, Alpha Mike Hotel. End number 809er and no more. I'll copy. So hopefully that first, hopefully I was slow enough. <laughs> so yeah, I, I learned with, with, with some stations I can go faster than with others. And so I try to adjust the speed based, based on that. Um, I don't know if we can throw that one up on the screen. Yeah. So you're ready for the reveal. Kind of, yeah. 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 Sure thing. And then uh, if, if any questions on, well, why did that go there? Or, um, that was really confusing. How come this, or you know, that type of thing? Um, you know, definitely wanted to 
to give that that clarity type of thing. Or if you're experts, uh, then then you can take Justin's, <laughs> and uh, you know we'll double check that uh, you know things are good. And then we had some some questions during the um, that presentation part. I want to jump in on those as well, and um, uh, if any other questions type of thing. Otherwise, silence is okay. acceptance. <laughs> Let's go on to Justin's uh, demo here. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, yep. I have uh, one more if you want to try it again. And uh, again, as they say, every uh, net usually has their own personality. So mine might sound a little bit different. So uh, I'll go ahead and get started. Please copy message number one, three, routine, kilo echo eight, Mike Yankee Foxtrot, one, eight, grand, rapids, I spell Romeo, Alpha, Papa, India, Delta, Sierra, Michigan, August 9. Going to your station. Break. Go. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for attending this talk. And hope to, I spell Tango Oscar, C, I spell Sierra Echo Echo, U, all at mixed group, Delta Charlie Two Niner, initial X ray, hack the planet. Figure 73, break. Signed, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> signed, Justin, amateur call, Kilo Echo 8, Mike Yankee Foxtrot, end message number 13. No more. How copy? Yeah. Roger 13. Thanks for the traffic. K8A. Yep. It's that Debbie we do it here. <laughs> yeah. Very good. There. Let's do a reveal right. on that. Right. Here we go. That's what it should look like. All right, yeah, so on that one, we also had a mixed group in there with a DC-29. That's another thing to keep out. And uh, when I mentioned the word two, I made sure to spell it out just so uh, it's 100% accurate and someone didn't write Tango Oscar Oscar yeah. on accident. They would spell Tango Oscar. So that's uh, when there's words like that, it's always important to make sure you spell those out. Very good. We'll leave this up here for a few seconds and uh, go to Q&A. Uh, I guess uh, let's go there now. So let's go to the chats. Uh, hit up uh, Discord, uh, presentation chat, or Twitch, and we'll get some questions. Uh, but I guess first, uh, you wanted to go over questions from the video. So go ahead, Aaron. Oh, okay. All right. We had we had two that came up during that. Um, first one, uh, do you know if and how other local and section traffic nets discourage use of the Internet? or national traffic system relay. So the, the heart of that question really is, how does the internet play in uh, with relaying um, traffic? And I mean, you could think of that as um, Echo Link, or uh, maybe if you're on All Star, or you know, something like that, where, where you're, you're leveraging the internet for, for moving things. Uh, from the national traffic system side, uh, we really want things to go over the air. We are preparing for uh, when infrastructure is not available. And it, sometimes you get the pushback of, well, when will that really happen? And you know, da, 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 da. and you know, I, I think back to, was it um, uh, T-Mobile third party um, had an issue on their end and it disrupted cellular communications essentially across the board, right? That's, that's the scenario we're preparing for. And so if we get into the habit of well, I got to relay this traffic from Dallas to, you know, I don't know, Washington or California or, you know, Massachusetts or something. And so, well, I'll just hop on Echolink and go over the internet and do that. And we, and we built that habit of we're just going to use the internet. Then when things really do hit the fan, and we got to go over the air, um, you kind of have to 
kids now start getting into that over the air HF handling, you know, that that's not the time we want to do that. We want to practice that now and build that muscle memory now so that when, when the event does happen, we could just flow into it and, and run with it. And by using HF now, if there is a, a piece of traffic that stalls or, or something like that, um, we can investigate and understand and improve the traffic system so that we're, we're you know, ready to roll when something does happen. If we try to shortcut that and use the internet, well, I, I couldn't get over HF, so I just dived on the internet. And we haven't really, we haven't really addressed what's going on. So the internet, some independent traffic nets use echo link or things, uh, but from the ARL side, we really wanted to move over the air to reflect a real world you know, situation type of thing. I don't know if that hopefully provides the clarity there. If there's if there's something I can um, clarify a little further, feel free to, to throw it in the in the discussion. Um, the other question we had was um, international radiograms are always in English. Um, for the traffic originating in the U.S., um, it, the common language that's over the air for us is English because that's you know one of the common languages here <laughs> in the U.S. So if I add something that you know, entered the system. Uh, let's say in Spanish, right? I'm in Dallas, so that that would be a good candidate for another language we might have. If I had no other option, like I had no uh, interpreters or things, and my my quasi Spanish skills could make it work, <laughs> then you know, I I would try my best to try and make that move. Now, there's some you know assumptions that happen with that that the people that get that along the way are going to be able to do the same thing, right? And that's the risk when you start taking traffic um, in, in a language other than, than English. Um, you're right, the thing has got to keep moving and you have to, to move it within the system that really, you know, the majority of us are all, all speaking English. And, and if you want to amplify that example even further, what if it was, um, you know, Chinese or Japanese or, or something, right? Um, I mean, it, that just adds even more complexity to things. So uh, when we're moving traffic here in the U.S. and the national traffic system against U.S. and Canada, English is, is, the, is the language that, that's you know, commonly used for that and, and drives the, 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 the very, 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 very vast majority of traffic. I have not encountered anything that, that wasn't in English. And if it's headed to um, Peter in, in Germany, or I, I know I've had some traffic from, well, you know, Great Britain, so it'll be English. Um, but things moving in and out, it's, it's English. Very good. Uh, let's go to the chats. Uh, Twitch and Discord, everybody, throw your questions out there. We'll uh, get Aaron to answer for us. I think the talk was so good, uh, everything was answered. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think you had the two big questions just there, so uh, we'll, yeah. we'll keep it open here for a minute. It's, it is very... It's kind of like okay, here's the fire hose and uh, enjoy. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I I give this talk um, once a month. My next one is is it this coming Saturday? Yeah, um, k8amh.com forward slash events. I have some folks that take it a couple of times, uh, uh, you know, where like the first time is all right, I'm ready to be overwhelmed, and then. You kind of have some time to kind of digest, but then come back to the next one and you, oh yeah, I remember that, or oh, okay, you know, it's just kind of the frame of reference changes. Um, you know, so uh, if if this is kind of um, you know, like, oh my, you know, holy crap, this is a bunch, <laughs> you know, uh, you're welcome to, to jump back in again, of course, type of thing, but. Uh, There's definitely uh, a lot to absorb. Yeah. <laughs> It's not something that's learned in ten minutes. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's something that's built in time, right? That muscle memory gets built, you know, with time. Uh, here's the question: Does this system get used for uh, QSL card equivalent sometimes? Uh, yes, uh, we'll get traffic sometimes that um, you know, great hearing, great hearing you on HF or you know something along that line type of thing. Um, you know, hope to hear from you again or those types of things. Yeah, it's um, it's something that that moves across the traffic system. Um, we get um, those types of, of radiograms. We get the like, happy birthday, Merry Christmas. We get the, you know, the welcome to the hobbies or, um, you know, learn, ask about Aries in your area, or, you know, those types of things. Um, 
we've had a couple of things that we're doing here uh, to help with with generating some, some variety and traffic too that um, I can quickly mention. One's a trivia program where uh, once a week uh, there's a new question that comes up, um, and you can you know send in your answer for points, and the points are you know just kind of you know why not I'll get some statistics but um, you know say yeah you got five right you know in the last you know a couple months or that type of thing um, but you send your answers as, as radiograms to the traffic system um, and I get to see how long it takes too so it gives me some data points to say well how is this system working and did that take you know one day or two days and on average it takes two days for things to, to move across the country um, but if you get that occasional why did that take two weeks you're right then you have the opportunity to understand and um, you know, try and improve things to um, you know make it better for next time type of thing but um, NTS trivia.com is the place for that one and uh, also have a pen pal program where I kind of hook you up with another traffic handler and you kind of just start the conversation of you know, getting to know each other through radiograms type of thing. So it's exactly pen pals, except instead of letters in the mail, it's uh, traffic through the traffic system. And uh, that's at ntspenpal.com. I, I could probably put those addresses in the in the chat areas. <laughs> might might be helpful. Uh, so why don't I do that? We'll throw that in chat and uh, definitely include it in the metadata for the video. So right. thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Justin. I think we're out of time. Uh, let's... Uh, yeah, I guess give a virtual round of applause. That was an amazing presentation. Definitely a lot to absorb. Uh, I hope this system gets used more. I'd definitely like to see some more radiograms in my local area. So that's very great. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. And if you have questions, yeah, kdmh at arl.net. Feel free. Yep. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.